Hi, I'm Danny, and I'm glad to be back to show you how to design text logos on PowerPoint, like this. And these, which I created entirely on PowerPoint during my time as a freelance graphic designer. The software allows you to easily design simple text logos. All you need is a bit of creativity. Since this is a detailed walkthrough, I've included timestamps in the description box for reference. Also, make sure to watch to the end of the video for a super helpful resource. Before we begin, you're going to need to have changed your computer settings to save all images and videos exported from PowerPoint in high resolution. To keep my videos short and straight to the point, I've created a separate tutorial entirely dedicated to this. It'll be linked here and in the description box. It's not difficult to do, but you need to have watched and completed that tutorial before following most of my tutorials to ensure a perfect final product. The first step is optional because you can always crop the final image afterwards, but if you would like to resize your slide, you should go ahead and do so now. Go to Design, Slide Size, and click on Custom Slide Size. I wouldn't go much smaller than the default slide size unless you're changing the aspect ratio, since a larger logo design will prevent pixelation issues in the future. It's always best to have to reduce the size of your logo than to increase it. If you want a particular size in pixels, which would be necessary to fit something like an Instagram or YouTube profile picture, all you have to do is input the width and height followed by PX. PowerPoint will automatically convert it to inches or centimeters for you. Next, type out all the text your logo will include. This video was requested by a viewer, so I decided to recreate a sample logo they emailed me. I have included a picture of the logo here for reference. Quick tip, for my personal projects, I always start out with a logo design idea. Don't be afraid to do some research for inspiration before sketching out your idea on paper or typing out your vision. Just make sure you have an idea to direct your design. Now go to insert, click on shapes and select the text box icon under basic shapes. I'm duplicating my first text box to create separate text boxes for the various sizes and fonts I have planned for each word. Then, you'll need to choose the fonts for your text. I love downloading free fonts to personalize each logo. I personally use fontspace.com, but there are lots of similar sites. Since I don't know the exact fonts used in the sample logo, I'm just going to take creative license and use similar fonts. By simply typing script into the search bar, I'm able to see tons of great fonts. Quick tip. To see how your specific text will look in all the font options, type it into the preview bar. This saves lots of time because you can quickly see exactly how it'll look. It even allows you to increase the text size and change color. The amount of fonts they have available is pretty overwhelming, so I try to restrict myself to the first 10 pages. Once you find a font you like, click Download Font and Save. Before installing, it's important to note the font's license information. Most fonts on FontSpace are free for personal use only, so if you plan to use the font commercially, such as for your business, make sure to purchase a commercial license. Microsoft products come with a lot of nice fonts, so downloading one from a third party isn't always necessary. To install the font, open the downloaded zip file. You may see multiple files. Usually the font will have individual files for all of its style variations, such as regular, bold, italic, etc. You can decide to only download the ones you need or just go ahead and install all of them, which is what I usually do. Open each individual font file and click install. It should only take a few seconds. Then you can exit the window. Quick tip. I found that if I install fonts while any Microsoft Office product is open and then try to search for the font in the program, it won't appear. So save, exit, and reopen PowerPoint, Word, etc. and your new font should be accessible. Now it's time to put the logo together. The secret for a simple logo that looks professionally made is to strategically mix fonts, colors, and textures. Thankfully, PowerPoint allows you to do all of these things. If you need some guidance on choosing complementary fonts and colors, I've linked two very helpful typography and color theory videos below. Once I have all my text in the desired font, I'll adjust the text size and layout to reflect my design idea. If you want to use images in your logo, you should go ahead and insert them now. You can also play around with text effects and shapes like I've done in past logos. Next, it's time to add color and texture. 
I like this sample logo because it features both a color gradient and text filled with an image. Let's start with the spoiled text since I'll pull colors from its fill image for the color gradient on lashes. To fill text with an image on PowerPoint, we'll need to use the picture or texture fill text option. Click on the text box, go to shape format, and click the little arrow by word art styles. This opens the text option sidebar. Click on the first icon called text fill and outline and choose picture or texture fill. From here, you can either insert a picture saved on your computer or copy a picture and paste it through the clipboard button. The image quality is pretty much the same either way, but you want to make sure you're using a high quality image. Quick tip, I usually find high quality pictures by going to Google Images and searching for the type of texture I want followed by the word wallpaper. Then I click on tools, size and select large. This way Google Images only shows the larger image sizes that will ensure my final product isn't pixelated or blurry. Once you find one you like, you can right click and select save image as to download it. This option gives you more control if you want to do things like rotate, crop and sharpen the image before inserting it. Horizontal images usually work the best. If you like the image as is or don't want to download it, you can right click and select copy image to use the clipboard option to immediately insert it. The sample logo appears to have a thin white border around the spoiled text, so I'll add that by scrolling down to double click text outline. Click on solid line and adjust the color and width. I also like to change the cap and join type for a perfect finish. Then we can create the color gradient on the lashes text. Click on the text box, go back to text options and choose gradient fill. From here, you can adjust all the various options to create your desired gradient effect. The sample logo seems to have a linear gradient, so I'll make sure that is selected under type. I'll set the direction to linear right so the colors change from left to right. Then it's time to choose the gradient colors. I always use the colors found in the image to ensure my logo is cohesive. All you have to do is select a gradient stop click on color and use the eyedropper tool to select colors from the image. Use the add and remove gradient stop buttons to ensure you don't have too many or too few for your desired gradient effect. Once I have all my colors inserted, I can manually adjust the position of each color or use the position percentage until I'm happy with the way my gradient looks. The final text box needs a solid fill, so I'll simply choose a color already used in the gradient. Lastly, the sample logo seems to have a subtle shadow behind the text. Shadows are a good way to add dimension and make your text pop. To add a shadow, click on the second icon under text options called text effects and double click shadow. I find it easiest to start with a preset and edit from there. Here I'm selecting the offset top right preset before editing the shadow color, transparency, blur and distance to reach my desired effect. Once you're happy with your design, it's time to save it. The first way is to save your logo with the slide background. So begin by moving anything you don't want to appear off to the side. Make sure the slide you want to save is selected before going to File, Save As, and naming your file. Then click on the bar that says PowerPoint Presentation to change the output to an image file. I always use PNG. Click save and just this one to only save the slide your design is on. Open where you saved your logo to see the final product and zoom in to ensure the image is crisp. Since it's an image file, you can now edit and crop out any unneeded space. The next way to save your logo is with a transparent background, which is necessary if you'll ever want to use it as a watermark. 
Since PowerPoint doesn't allow you to save slides with a transparent background, you'll have to manually select your entire design. Go to Shape Format, Shape Fill, and click No Fill to make sure none of your text boxes have a fill color. Then right-click and select Save as Picture. It should save as a PNG image file. The final product won't be as high quality as the first version, but as long as your design is a decent size, it'll appear clearly on any background. That's it. To quickly recap, first resize your slide, next type out your text, then download and install any additional fonts. Add images, complementary fonts, colors, and textures. Lastly, save your final logo design. Thanks for watching till the end. Since this was a lengthy tutorial, I've created a downloadable PDF with all the instructions, screenshots, and links so you can easily follow along on your own. All the info is in the description box. Thank you so much for your support. I've included a lot more information down below, so be sure to check that out. Please give this video a thumbs up to let me know it was helpful. Comment any suggestions you may have for future tutorials and let me know if you have any questions. I'll make sure to respond. Feel free to watch my previous videos and subscribe for more great tutorials. Bye!